Arthritis is a disease of the joints. It causes swelling and pain. Arthritis has many causes and to date, no cure. Over 700,000 people are living with different kinds of arthritis in Ireland. 1,000 of those are children. It was very sore and I just knew I had to get on with it. I knew the pain would go away at some stage. If I let it win, arthritis will win, but it can be beat like You can live a full and active life. Arthritis is the biggest cause of disability in Ireland. Joint pain and swelling causes mobility problems at any age. In older people, osteoarthritis is the wear and tear of joints. Juvenile arthritis affects children and teenagers and can appear in different forms, including rheumatoid arthritis. However, new research and health education increasingly brings fresh hope to arthritis sufferers and families. This is the story of two young people who are making a success of life with arthritis. The Costello family live in Bancha Tipperary. Neve Costello is 12. I'm Neve. This is my mum, Wendy, my sister, Quiva, and my dad, Declan, is at work. OK, so this is me and my granny when I was small and I love my granny, she's really close to me. And this cushion, I got that from my best friend, Ruth. She's really good to me. This is my guitar and I've been playing it for two years. And when I started off, I didn't like it and I wanted to quit it. But now I, I like it. These are all my posters on my door. I have a lot of girls allowed. I have a dog called Holly and I love playing with her outside and walking her. Neve Costello has juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. It's an unusual and severe form of arthritis in children. Chronic joint pain is a part of Neve's life. I do feel, as a carer for Neve now, I'm a full-time carer, that this is a serious, serious autoimmune disease. This is a s extreme pain for kids. Neve often says it's like someone has stuck a knitting needle into her joint and tweaked it around a little bit. Neve is the oldest of Wendy and Declan Costello's two children. We have a, a, very, a great relationship. We can talk about anything to one another. And she's a, a very honest and open child. Oh, I want again. Baba, black sheep. Hey, Wally, wool. Childhood arthritis can be difficult to diagnose. Symptoms include a sense of heat in the joints, swelling and stiffness. She actually dragged her left leg slightly behind as she crawled and relied on her right leg to do all the work. And even then when she walked, her left leg was always skipping. Uh, even my dad commented one day, are her shoes too tight on her? She's kind of walking funny in her left leg. And then uh, even a couple of times we've been to the doctor, we said, that left leg is kind of funny. You know, we didn't quite know how to explain it, but as I say, hindsight's a great thing. Uh, but he said she was growing, it was growing pains and, uh, you know, there was nothing to worry about. So we didn't. We didn't worry at all till three and a half. And then it was one morning she woke up with uh, an enormous knee, not just like a knee that she'd fallen and, uh, and there was bruising. No, it was just like her knee had completely puffed out. And then the next morning she came in on her hands and knees into our bedroom and said, Mummy, I can't walk. Recent health cutbacks can mean longer waiting times for some hospital services. Neve attended a specialist centre for juvenile arthritis at Crumlin Children's Hospital in Dublin. When we got to Crumlin, we certainly didn't realise what was ahead of us. <laughs> 25 year old Laura Hickey lives in Dublin. She shares an apartment with her boyfriend, Mark. Seriously? I'm Laura's boyfriend of six years. So we've been living together for about five. We sort of jumped in real quick, and uh, she's she's tries like she's really brave. But she's um, when she's when she gets sore and things, she tries not to let it affect her. So she tries to you know tr just tries to live a normal life. But sometimes it's a bit hard, like particularly if she's having a flare up in the mornings and things. 
and maybe it's hard for her to get going and she kind of has to get used to it. So I've gotten used to it. Laura was diagnosed with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis when she was 10 years old. People say, you know, when they're diagnosed, they're devastated. I wasn't. I was so relieved. Like, I was beyond relieved. Because when I was a kid, I had my whole life, like, in pain. I suppose arthritis manifested itself as something else. My mum and dad, at night and in the morning, they were rubbing, you know, an anti-inflammatory cream into my joints and stuff. And, like, the doctors really were like, there's kind of pretty much nothing wrong. So I thought, like, I was literally going mad. But then I was 10, I woke up and I couldn't move. So my mum brought me straight down to the GP and it was that GP that pretty much spotted it straight away and he was like, I think she's juvenile arthritis. Laura Hickey's arthritis is an autoimmune condition. When the condition is active, her body attacks itself at the joints, creating inflammation. The result is painful swelling in her ankles, knees, wrists, hands and feet. The exact cause of juvenile arthritis is unknown. The word arthritis to me means pain. It means that I'm quite sore in the morning and I get quite stiff throughout the day. I always thought I was a crap cook and then I started cooking, so I suppose it's a sense of achievement, really. So I'm just putting the chocolate in here because I had to break it up my hands, but my hands are quite sore, so I'm going to literally bash the hell out of it. The can's like, um, like this guy here. And my choice of when I'm buying tins of stuff would be trying to get these, because the tin opener is a lot more difficult, but sometimes these break, which um, can be frustrating when you can't do something and you're stuck at home and you're trying to bake something or you're trying to cook your dinner and nothing kind of seems to be working. So pressing something as simple as like the button here. I need my two fingers to release it, which is, I suppose, something everyone else finds so simple, but uh, even lifting this. My lowest point of having this would be when I can't do anything for myself. When I'm literally, I get out of the bed and I'm like a 90 year old woman. I actually think my granny is almost 90 and she could well outrun me at times and you're literally on crutches and even then the crutches you can barely use them because you're putting so much pressure on your body and just literally not being able to get dressed like do your hair cook for yourself it's so awful because you kind of lose your independence and you're a young woman and you don't have the same like life as everyone else and you kind of wonder why Neve Costello enjoys swimming lessons at her local pool. I love swimming because it helps my knees as well, and I just love being in the water and swimming. I can do anything I want in the water because it doesn't hurt me at all. Hello, Neve. Hello, my daddy. How are you today? I am well. After her early arthritis diagnosis, Neve continued to feel pain when she was a toddler. So then we went back to Crumlin and, and we had to have another course of steroids. Still, things didn't improve. I didn't really know what it was. I just knew I had pains in my knees and they were very sore. It was only my left knee at that stage, but still, my knee was very, very sore. So eventually, when she was five, they injected her joint then. And to be honest, she was like a new woman when she got that injection. And I thought, that's it. That's the end of that now. Neve's new treatment worked well at first. She was pain free for a number of years, but in 2007, her respite ended. Suddenly, Neve said, Mommy, my knee feels funny. And I said, Roll up your trousers, Neve. And she rolled up her trousers, and it was massive. So I arranged to go to Crumlin. I thought, oh God, how can it stay dormant for two years and then all of a sudden decide to come back? She wasn't under any stress or nothing had changed in her life that, you know, might have brought it on. But Dr. Colleen said, yeah, juvenile arthritis. I think the lowest point for me 
was when after the two years remission it came back. If it had come back maybe six months after the initial then maybe I would have dealt with it better but because we had two years of not a twinge and Neve getting back to full health I really felt so sorry for myself and Neve. I just felt like something cruel had happened to us and how unlucky we were and why did it happen to us? Mum was always crying and I'd usually tell her like stop crying <laughs> like it's going to go away but it, it never did really. I was a bit of a drama queen and I was crying a lot and say why is it me that gets everything and my mum used to try and calm me down but now I, I understand now that I'm older and I know what it, it's all like but back then I was young and I didn't know what it was and I just kept crying and crying and why is it me, why does everything happen to me? At the beginning, I blamed myself. Was there something I did when she was young? Was there something down to my parenting that brought this on? Well, obviously now I know that is a complete load of rubbish. But at that stage, you're, you are searching for answers and even little hints, why did they start? But as the years go on, you realise no matter what you'd have done, the disease is going to move as slow or as fast as it sees fit. In Dublin, Laura Hickey found managing teenage arthritis difficult. I tried so many tablets and various treatments and herbal and medications and stuff and I went from one basically medication to another as a kid and nothing worked and I got very little relief and I was taking steroids quite a lot. I was missing a lot of time in secondary school uh, just in my fifth and sixth year, but I was still studying at home. And I was complete business head. It's all I ever wanted to do, and I wanted to do finance and stuff. My teacher told my mum that perhaps I should pursue something a little less challenging. So I went and did it anyway. I got my leaving cert, and um, I went to college. An arthritis flare-up is when symptoms worsen quickly and for no apparent reason. A flare-up includes inflammation and severe crippling joint pain. I actually had a flare a couple of weeks into my first year in college and I was really, really poorly and I couldn't move and I had to go find myself a new GP and go to the doctor and then get to Dublin to see my consultant and it was so stressful like to try and manage everything myself and I suppose I'm a way stronger person for having to do all those things but I remember like thinking, oh my God, how am I going to do this and manage? It's a piece in the oven for half an hour. give this a push because I don't want to bend down. Cleanliness is really important when Laura's arthritis is active. Attacks can lower her body's defences. I'm forever washing my hands because when you have an autoimmune disease, you're quite prone to infection and, and you get pick up all these little colds and kind of flus and stomach bugs and stuff. So I'm so, I suppose, paranoid that I get them because they really take it out of me like I don't... Um, it takes me a while to recover and then I kind of get a flare up in my joints and stuff, so. Usually all of a sudden it just pops up any time, any place. It was like, mostly, well, I'd wake up during the night and like it would wake me during the night and I couldn't get back to sleep and I'd have bad nights sleep. I'd wake up in the morning and I'd be very stiff and I'd just run a bath and have a bath and do some exercises in the bath to loosen my joints out and then I'd get up and get dressed and do some more exercises then when I come home from school. Physiotherapy and exercise keep arthritic joints flexible. I have a special band that I push around just to I pull my toes up and I pull the band with them. No, this, this is my file on arthritis. <laughs> I really need to sort it out, don't I? If there's anything in it, in magazines or anything, I literally just cut it out because I never know when I'll need it. Actually, this is a, a particular bro brochure that uh, Cueva loves, which is Neve's younger sister. She, Neve was given this by the Arthritis Association when she was first diagnosed, and it just explains 
particularly for four to eight year olds, in real simple terms, what happens on doctor's visits. It shows exactly in layman terms what they'd be going through. And as you can see, Quiva loves this. Quiva, when I'm having a bad flare up, she'd draw a picture for me and, and make me like happy and all. And she'd um, uh, draw her cards. She does me cards and. Uh... And I play games with her. Neve's dad, Declan, works long hours as a sales rep. You do miss being at home. There's, there's certain things that. I mean, I'm gone in the morning. And so I, I've, I've never taken Neve to a blood test. It might, be, it might be 11 o'clock and it might only be for 10 or 15 minutes, but because I don't work local, I can't take that 15 minutes to be there and, and, and do that. But I generally, I take, the days we go to Crumlin, I'll take those days off. And if she has to have a, an injection or whatever, I try to be there for those as well. Um, I know she's in good hands when she's with Wendy anyway. I mean. And then sometimes I feel, I won't say I feel out of it, I mean, but I often wonder that, you know, I, I should know a bit more and... Regular blood tests monitor the progress of arthritis. Charting blood count can alert to flare-ups. There are various different bloods that uh, have to be watched when you have arthritis, like your blood count in general, your ESR, which determines the amount of inflammation going on in your body. So obviously, if your ESR is high, which as you can see, it was here 20, it means that the uh, arthritis is active and is bound to pop out in one or two joints. And at various stages like this, number four, it's practically non-existent. So the ESR is the main blood test that you'll be sent for first to see how active it is and to determine that it is arthritis. So these are things I have to use sometimes when um, I'm having a flare-up. My crutch, obviously, for obvious reasons. Um, but I don't have to use it that often anymore, thank God. Um, this is what is known as a wrist splint. Um, see the bar there keeps your wrist in a straight position so you can't move it so it rests your wrist and when it's inflamed and then this is like an electric blanket it is fabulous basically what we're trying to do um, myself and my physio who I go to weekly she's trying to build up the small muscle in my neck so it takes off the pressure and what I do is I just literally stick this behind my neck and lie down and it the gauge here has see the pressure so I have to try and keep it at 22 and 24 for 10 seconds Laura Hickey was adamant arthritis would not define her. At university studying finance, she kept her illness hidden. I thought I wasn't sick enough for some reason to join the college disability that was known as the access officer in my college. Someone advised me that I really should let them know just that I had something wrong with me. So I went there anyway and I registered for her and she was just so good to me. She just told me like all the services were that were there. I think, oh my God, it's going to be such a stigma around me. But I found that by telling people that I had arthritis that they were so understanding. So I kind of threw myself and surrounded myself with like really nice people. And I suppose that's really how I kind of survived college. Myself and Mark met on the first week of college and we both graduated at the same time. So it was like, it was really, really nice. Student life is challenging at the best of times. Pain management and side effects from medication increase those challenges. During a flare-up a few years ago, Laura reached a turning point. It was about two o'clock in the morning and I couldn't move. And I had pain everywhere. I, on my old um, tablets, I used to get really bad mouth ulcers and I remember I was just so sick. I was just, I just thought the night would ever, never ever end like Laura became more vocal about her condition. When I did a course with Arthritis Ireland, I realised that there's so much you could do and that you could just actually say to your consultant, you know, I feel rubbish and this is how it's impacted my life. Arthritis sufferers have several pain relief options, not all successful. They come in tablet, cream and injection form. Under medical supervision, steroids, anti-inflammatory and newer biologic drugs have proved beneficial. Biologics block blood proteins that lead to swelling and pain. Recently, Laura Hickey found treatment that works for her. Just have my injection here. It has to be refrigerated at all times, which is a hassle in itself. These injections have literally transformed my life. I just take an injection once a week and I get my joints injected just every couple of months. 
and that is working wonders for me. Arthritis medication and pain management can also complicate or hinder a woman's plans to have children. I suppose I'm 25 now and my friends laugh at me when I think about having a baby and stuff, but when that choice is taken away from you, it's not, it becomes a big deal. If I want to become pregnant, I have to come off my medication for six months. Your body goes into remission and then once you have the baby, you get a really bad flare up again and you go straight back on your medication. Then there's the whole impact of trying to cope with minding the baby. Like that's the task in itself for any woman. But when you have arthritis and you're having the flare up, like it's so difficult. I know because the choice was taken away I me, mean, just to, the ability to have a baby straight away, that I really want a child. And if I couldn't, I'd be so devastated. But I also know that there's so much more I have to think about. In Tipperary, the Costellos work closely with doctors trying different medications with daughter Neve. Although they haven't found a perfect solution, biologic injections have helped. But you find the ice helps, don't you? That the ice numbs the area. That was a tip the nurse gave us when she came out to start you on the embryo. Now I just need to draw this out. This is the tricky part we're getting used to. There's a difference when you give the injection and you see then afterwards.